Hi there, my name is Ethan Tapper, the Chittenden County Forester, and I'm here to help you identify American Beech. Now, I always learned American Beech as uh, a tree that had elephant skin bark. So, a healthy American Beech should have bark that is completely smooth and gray, no matter what the size of the tree is, and it looks like the skin of an elephant. There's a couple of other traits you can use to identify American Beech. One is that their bud can see that their bud I learned looks like a cigar that a mouse would smoke it's a very long very thin pointy bud it looks like it would poke your eye out no other tree that you're gonna find in Vermont is gonna have a bud that's as long and thin and pointy as this bud another characteristic that you can look for is their leaves so you see here this is last year's leaf on their leaves, you'll see that there is one tooth, one little spike at the end of each vein on the leaf. They're the only tree that will do that. So again, that's one tooth on the end of each vein on the leaf. Now, while American beech bark is supposed to be perfectly smooth elephant skin bark, there is something that prevents it from being that in many cases. And what that is is something called beech bark disease. It's an invasive introduced disease um, and it afflicts many of our beech trees. And so what that disease does is essentially cause uh, that smooth elephant skin bark to be broken up into many of these circular pock marks. It will lead to other things happening, sometimes uh, cracking and stuff like that. And there will still be areas where you'll be able to see smooth elephant skin bark, but you'll also in many cases see these circular pock marks uh, defining the, the bark of many of our beech trees. Another characteristic to look for is that when beech trees are young and in the understory of the forest, you'll see that they often will hold on to last year's leaves. And so in the wintertime, they'll be walking through the forest and you can see these golden leaves, which will be on many of the little beech trees throughout the understory of the forest. And you'll actually hear them rattling in the wind. Prior to European settlement, we think that American beech was a huge part of our forest, probably 40 to 60% of all the trees in our forest. And the reason for that, there are a couple. The first is that it is very tolerant of shade, so it can grow and exist under almost no direct sunlight. The second is that it is very long-lived, so it can live to be many hundreds of years old. So in a forest, when there's very few and far between large-scale disturbances, what will happen is that many trees which can maybe grow faster are also less long-lived, and so they will decline, and as they decline, these trees which are capable of living in the understory of the forest growing more slowly but living a longer period of time will eventually become dominant now there's a couple of other factors that are threatening beech the biggest of which is beech bark disease what that does is it prevents beech trees in most cases from becoming very large very old like they used to it also makes them root sprout so beech trees when they get stressed out they shoot up clones little sprouts from their root system uh, and beech trees, in most cases, are stressed out all the time from beech bark disease. And so what that means is that a lot of times you'll end up with this monoculture of beech whips in the understory of your forest. This is compounded by the fact that we know that we now have an overpopulation of deer in Vermont, and that's certainly the case for New York and other surrounding states as well. Um, and deer really don't like to eat beech. So what they'll do is they'll browse all the little ash and all the little sugar maple and all the little yellow birch and the red oak and they'll leave the beach, allowing the beach to become more dominant in the understory.